there and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. This one is about a proof in set theory. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to prove that two sets are the same. And as our sets will have a minus b intersected with c, and we'll prove that this is equal to c minus b intersected with a. Now, my first tip would be when you get a claim like this, well, in this case I told you we're going to prove it, but in general, you don't know whether such a thing is true or false. So the first thing is you should check it out. Make a Venn diagram, see what happens. So A minus B, um, yeah, that's this section, right? Okay, and then intersect that with C, and we get, yeah, just this section left. Okay, what about C minus B? C minus B is this section, intersected with A, ah, Okay, that seems to be the same section. So the thing checks out. So yeah, sure, looks like they're the same. So that means we should be able to prove it, right? Well, let's see if we can do that. Now remember that although the picture has helped us to see that the claim is probably true, a picture is definitely not a proof. So let's start on our real formal proof. How does that work? Well, let's see what the set a minus b intersected with c actually is. It's all of the x such that x is in a minus b and x is also in c. This is the definition of our intersection. So what does a minus b actually mean? Well, it means that x has to be an element of a and x should not be an element of b and x of course should still be an element of c. This is the definition of the minus. Now, if we rearrange that slightly, remember that the end is commutative, that is the order of operands doesn't matter. So that means that we can recombine them to get x must be in a and x must be in c minus b, again by the definition of the minus, which means that, ah, x must be in c minus b intersected with a. Aha, so that is exactly the set c minus b intersected with a. Exactly what we set out to prove, QED. Now, we could have got an alternative route. When proving that two sets are equal, you can also show that one must be a subset of the other and vice versa. We could have done the same here, and in another pencast I'll, I show you how to prove that one subset is a, one set is a subset of another. But in this case, this algebra that works both ways was a little bit quicker. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.